So on my solo road trip back home from California to Atlanta, I spent four amazing days in Arizona. The deserts there are so beautiful. California may be the state I think is the most beautiful, but all oh, the deserts in Southern Arizona are gorgeous. The dogs and I met some friends. Okay, not really friends, but we did see some coyotes. We got help from several acquaintances. We did meet some people, got some sightseeing in, got a little bit of bird watching in, and really made the most of our time there. Had some RV trouble though, self-inflicted I have to admit, and some cactus trouble, maybe also self-inflicted. I left Palm Springs, happy that I had seen Joshua Tree, would love to go back and explore that area some more, but I was also looking forward to seeing Southern Arizona again. We had spent some time there 20 years before and I just remembered loving it, although I was a young mom with kids, so my attention was divided at the time. So, kind of a long story about setting up here, but I got set up enough that I thought I'll take the dogs for a walk before the rain starts. So we had a nice little walk around the park pretty good, but I came back to this because somehow during transit, <laughs> my sink was on. I'm not sure how that happened, but the inside flooding actually is not as bad as you might think. And so lesson learned, don't turn on the water until you're ready to get in the camper so you can keep an eye on things because I would have seen that. <sighs> oh well, time to dry things out. Oh my gosh, so where to start? We got in about 45 minutes ago, I think. And we are in outside Phoenix and this is actually a beautiful park and someone is having car trouble across the way, but it's not a junkie park at all. So anyway, it's just someone having an unfortunate problem. But it's a beautiful park. <sighs> Turned out it was a back in sight, which I was trying to avoid because I haven't backed in very much. But I backed in and I was feeling pretty good about it. I was, it did not look like a professional job. I was a little crooked and I was not particularly close to the hookups, but my cord would reach. I got out and I tested it. And the man next door came over and told me, I should try again because I really was crooked. <laughs> and I was too far to one side, which I was, but it was fine. I was on my side, I was on the pad. So I tried again and, oh my goodness. So I am challenged with directional things. I know that, but I know a way I understand to back up my trailer and I need to practice it, but I basically understand what I'm doing. He was telling me things to do and I would say, I don't think so. I think I need to go the other way. And he'd say, no, no, no. I've been doing this for many, many years and you need to go this way. And then I'd start going his way and he'd say, oh, no, nope, you were right. And then I was actually feeling pretty comfortable about using the mirrors and looking at the trailer. The backup camera's not working right now. But I was feeling pretty good about understanding where I was in space. And this gentleman tells me, you've got to decide, use the mirrors or look at the trailer, but don't do both, you'll confuse yourself. Maybe it confuses him, but I was feeling good. Needless to say, I could not get back in the space with his help. So I told him, thank you, please leave me alone. Tried again a few more times. Another nice man came by, I wanted to help. I refused. <laughs> Ended up getting very frustrated and flustered, of course. Couldn't even get back in the space. Circled the parking lot, took a deep breath. Was getting back in and another couple stopped. Oh, and the first man offered to do it for me, which just really irritated me, no end. Um, <sighs> still upset. <laughs> so came back. Finally, this other couple offered to help. And that gentleman actually did just offer me a little bit of help. Like, you know, you're fine over here. Keep turning, turn, turn your wheels. But it was, it was much more modest help. It was more like someone would offer Randy. <laughs> um, and it wasn't, I was, yeah, it's like, I was in my spot. I was in it the first time. I was going to be okay. Anyway. And then I made a mistake and turned on my water before I went and took the dogs for a little walk because I knew they needed to go and they'd been very patient through all that. Took them for a nice little walk around. 
came back about 15 minutes later and there's water dripping everywhere because the faucet had come on during transit again, which there is my kitchen faucet and it jiggles somehow and comes on. So I've got to figure out like maybe a short bungee or something to keep it from coming on while we're moving. This is a beautiful site, site 17, which is a back in sight, too bad, but <laughs> huge picnic area. My camper is still dripping from its flood. But just really beautiful campground. In addition to the amazing natural beauty of this campsite, the trails of the park hook up right at the campsite, so it was easy to get out and get out onto trails early. Don't get prickled, Hank. Don't get prickled. Careful, buddy. Got to take the dogs for a walk and then go back and take my own walk. Hopefully I'll be able to zoom in. <laughs> Maggie had an unfortunate meeting with cacti on this walk, which means so did I. So I should have brought some gloves with me. I think we're all okay now. Actually, so did Pepper. Pepper didn't mind as much. She says the plants here are spicy. These are what got Maggie and Pepper and Hank. They're quite big. There's my hand for scale. Yeah. And they hurt. There was a sign about these at Joshua Tree, which I think is funny now. It was some early explorer, some European explorer, who said, is there anything good about these? And the sign, of course, was trying to explain how, oh, they are good cactus wren, and the desert rodents need them. But after this morning, I kind of understand that man's quote really well. It's still pretty though, even if you're in a cactus wren. I'm at White Tank Regional Park outside of Phoenix. It's a Maricopa County Park and it's beautiful, just beautiful. It rained all night last night, but this morning is nice and cool, but breezy. It's a beautiful morning. I wish I could stay here a couple of days, but I'm moving on to, Phoenix, to Tucson and maybe it rained there too. They always say the desert blooms a few days after a rain and I would love to see that, but maybe I'll see it down there.
think the inside of Sora is so interesting. Look at that. Wow. What fascinating plants. Another beautiful Arizona park. This is Catalina State Park outside of Tucson. And that's the view from our dinette tonight. We saw a coyote earlier. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I'm at Catalina State Park. It's a little damp from all the rain. Not too bad. I finally figured out what I'm gonna do today. So Tucson has so much to offer, I really need to come back here sometime when I have more than one day. <laughs> it was my favorite stop when we came out west, oh gosh, 20 years ago. And we only spent a couple days in Tucson then. And I remembered it was my favorite place and I think it probably still would be. Um, Anyway, a complicating factor today is that there's a wash entering the campground that they warn you if there's been rain it could flood and the campground could be cut off. So anywhere I go the dogs either have to be able to go or they have to be able to wait in the car. It's very cold today. It's like 50 degrees. They'll be fine waiting. But the National Park doesn't allow that so no National Park today. I think we're just going to take some hikes here. This is a beautiful park. And then I want to see the mission, and they can wait for me while I go in and see the mission, San Xavier. And then I've been looking at restaurants that are recommended because I'm going to treat myself to a evening out. Looking forward to it. And I'm going to give the dogs two walks today so I don't have to deal with all three at the same time. <laughs> We're about to do the Romero Canyon Trail, well, part of it. We definitely will not do all of it. We don't have time or energy for that, do we, girls?
So this is the end of our walk because dogs aren't allowed any further, which I knew at some point we'd get there. So we have to turn around. Maybe we'll do a little bit of a loop trail too. <laughs> it's cold. It's so fast. Keep going, keep going. Come on, Maggie. Maggie, keep going. Come on. <laughs> oh, we gotta go across. We gotta go across. Come on, Pepper. Come on, Pepper. After the dog walk, I went out to see the San Xavier Mission, built in the Tohono O'odham Nation. This church was built in 1797. And it's interesting because even though it's just a small reservation, the culture is different and dogs are off leash. They were all very healthy, but I met this puppy friend. I happened to have some dog treats in my pocket that I could share. The church and the setting here were both very beautiful. But to me, the most interesting thing was that this was such an active parish community. There were booths set up for tourists selling food and a few different items. But overall, it just felt like this was clearly the people's parish, which is something very different than when you visit a mission ruin. There's a really interesting ruin, Tamaka Kori, just south of here. I changed my mind and did leave the dogs alone back at the camper so that I could see a little bit of Sawara National Park. I felt comfortable that the campground wasn't going to get cut off and I didn't want to take the dogs with me and decide I wanted to walk a trail that they couldn't walk. Plus, I was going to eat out, which I did at Saguaro Corners restaurant. I honestly don't remember what I had. The food was good, but what made this place so special was the desert view from the dining room. And it was fun because so many of us were up and watching the animals outside that it was kind of neat to meet the other diners that way. I discovered on this trip that my dogs love mesquite pods. All right, come on guys. Yummy, yummy. That is a beautiful sunrise behind me. Today we leave for Las Cruces and a winery, so I have to get there before they close. <laughs> so I've got a time limit today. As to mistress. Wow. This is the bridal path, which leads to the equestrian camp, which I'm hoping we don't have to run any horses this morning. But we've been the other direction on this trail that leads to the main trailhead. I was curious to see what this way would lead us to. There were some horses down at the equestrian center, but the dogs were so busy with the coyote smells and the deer smells that they didn't know. This is our Anchor Solus battery backup that we got so we could do more boondocking. And I meant to charge it up last night. So that meant plugging it into the power pole and plugging the camper into it. 
but instead I forgot to turn the power back on after I got it set up, so I drained it completely last night. But it charges quickly, so it's ready to go. All right, Hank. Come on, buddy. Alright, that is the little doohickey that I broke. This thing right here, <laughs> this thing right here that I bent too far out when I was first learning to do this. It looks okay right now, but I know it's not really right. I think the pin is upside down. much if it's mechanical the only thing I know how to do to fix things is do something with zip ties so consulting with Randy I came up with a zip tie method of keeping that weight distribution bar in place even though I couldn't get the pen right I remembered these rock formations from the trip out west and at the time they were the first really beautiful interesting thing I'd seen in a few days crossing kind of the barren outback that is New Mexico and West Texas. So I wanted to stop. We stopped here at the Texas Canyon Coast area. It's a beautiful place. And the dogs are bored, now I'm sleepy. We barely started today. It's gonna be a long one. This stop is so scenic, but the pet walk area is over here in the car parking. And I didn't see any safe path to get the dogs down here. And they got terrible sand spurs trying to give them a break. And that was it for Arizona. That night I was in Las Cruces. Well, really Mesilla, just outside of Las Cruces surprised by pecan groves. We have so many pecan groves in Georgia, I did not expect to see them in New Mexico. Okay, so we made it in plenty of time. Um, yeah, ready to get home. But this is a nice vineyard, Rio Grande Valley Vineyard. And it's Mesilla. Mexico, just outside of Las Cruces. It looks like a really neat little old town to explore, which maybe I'll be able to do in the morning. We'll see. So in my next video, I'll share what I did while I was in New Mexico, which is a very surprising state full of things like snow that was completely unavoidable, and a lot of open space and mineral extraction. I'll also include my days in West Texas, which, wow, West Texas is what it is, which is unique and worth seeing, but so hard to drive through. Thanks for watching all this way. If you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe to catch my New Mexico and Texas video coming up next. All the hope I just can't see While I'm hurting and bleeding but the help is on its way, way too.